I'm saying? So we gonna get these. What's up guys, Eric here with the Hollow Herald and today we got a very interesting video for you guys. You guys can probably already tell from the name below, but we're going to be talking about Holland's one year later. So in this video we're going to be talking about all of the mishaps, happenings, apps, everything we've done over the past year. Just a quick little recap, all focused around the Holland's and have our views on it changed? Has the, the device held up to standards and have the apps held up? Uh, so let's jump into it. First we're going to talk about durability of the HoloLens. The HoloLens has held up quite well if you ask me, uh, besides being filthy. Something about the HoloLens just attracts dirt, just the, the way the glass is so clear, uh, fingerprints just get attached right onto it. The nice matte finish tends to attack to grease and such, but um, it's a beautiful looking device and all the parts still work after a whole year. I'm gonna preface this by saying our Hollands is definitely one of the most used out there and used in most different situations. We've taken it outside, uh, we've put it next to water. I mean, we, we've done a lot with it to say the least. It's been moved around from lots of different locations. Um, it's been tested by, by hundreds of people, our friends, our family. We give it to them to try. So it's not like it's just sat there in a pristine box this whole time. It's definitely been put through its runs. So let's talk about some of the noticeable wear. There's a little bit to say. If we look right here on the headband, you can see it's lost a little bit of its cushion. Not much though, and it's rubbed away a little bit of the fluffiness. Not anywhere near to the point where it needs to be replaced, but I would say maybe a year or another year two, we'd probably have to replace the headband. It looks like it's peeling a little bit over here, but it still feels really cushiony, still feels really good. All the sensors still work, everything's good. Um, it still has lots of spring to, this is supposed to bend by the way, it's supposed to flex for if people put it on wrong or if they extend it wrong, this is meant to flex. And it still flexes perfect. Headphone jack doesn't have any gunk in it. The USB port has become a little loose. Um, I think that's because on a nor on normally on a phone with B it always comes out to the side, but this comes straight down. And I think that puts a lot more pressure than a mini USB is mostly used for. We'll get more into that port a little bit later. The audio sounds great. Overall, nose pieces are still in perfect condition. Uh, I mean, no complaints. So let's get into the apps and software of it. This is what you guys came here for. This is what you guys watch our channel for is the Holland's apps. If you guys have been following the progression of the Holo Herald, we probably previewed every notable app on the HoloLens that's worth showing. There's a little bit of quirky ones here or there, but overall we've been previewing all the really giants and the good ones. The HoloLens started out a year ago when we first got it with probably 15 or less apps, and most of those were made by Microsoft. They were great. Uh, and now there's probably close to 200, 300 apps. There's a lot. Um, all made by individual developers and startups and companies. Microsoft hasn't put out another big hitter since they've released it. The quality of apps has been progressively getting bigger on the HoloLens. The stuff that developers are building takes more use of mixed reality, and they're really getting better. And I think that's only going to go up with time. Yet, nothing has come close to the quality of the original Microsoft ones. I think that's due to budget capabilities, um, inspiration, and they needed flag really great flagship apps to come out there. Apps I mean are Hollow Tours, Fragments, Robo Raid. Uh, there's still really nothing to that quality. As far as apps go, the most noteworthy ones are games. We still have yet to see too many extremely useful ones that you would use every day. There's measuring. There's putting stuff into your space. There's a lot of variety, but yet nothing that really has a lot of stick. That said, we expect this to change very soon. With more, with Microsoft pushing their ho Windows holographic and their mixed reality headsets, we expect the quality of apps to rocket up soon. So let's talk about this micro USB port. What were you thinking, Microsoft? This is a flagship $3,000 product. This should be jam-packed full of the most futuristic ports and technology. Uh, and this is just really holding the device back. This really needs to be USB-C. I realized when this device came out, USB-C was not as popular, but the device wasn't popular in the first place, so we could have got on it. $3,000 for heaven's sakes. The durability of this is just not there, and I'd like something with a little bit more of a snug fit, uh, and it could charge a little bit faster, to be honest. And another port. This right here. Call me crazy, but I, don't, I haven't talked to a single HoloLens user that's used this. 
I get why it's there. I get if you're in an office setting and maybe you need to put in headphones to control and stuff like that. But honestly, the omnidirectional speakers do a good enough job of directing your right head. If it's not blaring loud, nobody around is gonna hear it. And it just feels a little weird to put headphones in and have them all wrap around and then control volume. It's a little quirky. I don't really get why it's there, but it's not really a detrimental at the end. Just something we've noticed over the years. Also, the top headband that comes across. Great addition, we don't use it very often. I'd like to see a little bit of a better design in, in the number two for the headband to take a little bit of that weight off the front. I'd actually like to see in the second design, a lot of this weight moved the back of the head. It gets a little heavy sitting on the nose. And I know a lot of this is glass and processing power and everything, but I feel like the distribution could have been done a little bit more even over the whole head. And since we're talking about quirks, let's talk about Cortana for a second. I probably just set off everybody's computer saying that, and that's my biggest problem. You hear one person say, okay Cortana, and everybody's computers kicks on. Sorry for that if you guys are on Windows. Having to say, okay Cortana, in normally an office full of Windows computers, starts to cause problems. She's not the sharpest AI in the tool shed, if you know what I mean. She's still got a little bit longer to go to keep up. And don't get me wrong, I'm not a Google fanboy, I'm not an Amazon fanboy, I'm not a fanboy of any of these AIs in general. They all kind of tick me off. But it's getting there. Hey there guys, while Austin was editing the video, we actually forgot to talk about one really important topic of the HoloLens, the clicker. This cool little doodad that you actually don't see very often in our videos. Uh, we actually big fans of the clicker. It just doesn't look as good in videos. You can't really get, it looks really nice when you can see the hand up there. It looks better for thumbnails, looks better for everything like that. But when we're not filming, we tend to be using this clicker. It's awesome. And I cannot wait for the new mixed reality controllers to come out to add to the HoloLens. Hopefully with headsets, we'll move away from that type of technology, but the controllers are a good step forward to being able to manipulate with holograms and talk with it. The gestures on the HoloLens were great. We haven't seen any updates or anything added, but who knows? 2018 is coming up real quick. Now to overall impressions of the HoloLens. After a year, I've really fallen in love with this thing. I mean, it ha did have an expensive price tag at the time, but I've come to terms with why it is, and I've started to realize why it was so expensive. Microsoft took a big risk on this device. I mean, all the R&D, the millions and millions of dollars that went into developing a device like this, and not just developing the device, taking the risk to see if something like this is even worth putting money into. We've seen a lot of people follow into AR, and we've only seen it get bigger recently. With that being said, I could put the HoloLens away, but I'd much rather keep it. I'm not, I don't want to get rid of it anytime soon. I want to keep trying it every day. I want to see what apps are made for it. Uh, I have no buyer's remorse. And you're not seeing the core technology leave anytime soon. If anything, we're skyrocketing towards it. So sit tight and cheers to another year of HoloLens. Ding. <laughs>